Hello everyone, welcome back to the one more session of Multimedia Systems. Today we will be discussing with the new topic that is called Optical Storage. Before going into the topic called Optical Storage Media, let us discuss what was the earlier types of media that was used? Before the method of using the optical things, that is the optical storage device, people used to store in the information in the form of data with the magnetic tapes. The best example that can be seen or that we have already gone through, you might have seen, dear students, the, the floppy disk, where you can find a spiral or a spindle kind of filament, where it is called a magnetic text. Even though you might have seen in audio cassettes, those the tapes will be there, on which due to electromagnetic effect, the data would have been stored on that. So even it is the same, even with respect to the videos also. So earlier, the concept was using the magnetic tapes to store the data. Later, they found that it was not adequate where data used to get troubled. When you say troubled, it, got, it used to get damaged, eradicated or delicate, deleted. So and the preserving the concept of data was heavy and it was much more restricted. So they started to think about the, to overcome those problems. So in the process of overcoming those problems, the next thing that came into the picture was optical storage. Let us look into the basics or introduction with respect to the topic called optical storage. Let us start with the introduction. So earlier, okay, external devices used to you used to store the multimedia systems which included the video recorders and dat we call it as when we call about dat it is nothing but digital audio tapes what we have discussed now So in the book, textbook, it is referred, uh, referred as DAT. So digital video recorders where the radio, videos were recorded on the tapes, what we said about, what we just discussed about magnetic tapes, where due to electromagnetic inference, those data was stored on the tapes and it was very much sensitive. So people who have used the floppy disk know this problem. I will tell you one illustration with respect to floppy disk. Why the electromagnetic is so important and preserving or storing the data was so difficult. So earlier, during my graduation, we used to use floppy disk. During the storage of floppy disk, we used to store the floppy disk and keep it in our pockets. So we transfer the programs or whatever we know that and keep it in a pocket and we used to spend three to four hours. Later, when we take out that the floppy disk and try to insert into the system and try to retrieve the information, the information was not retrievable and it used to say disk corrupted. Why? We were very much shocked. We have not tampered the disk, so nothing has done, we have not de deleted and still why is this problem occurred? Later we got to know since electromagnetic induction, when we call it as induction, it is not induction of heat also. So body temperature with respect to the its own magnetic field is to react and corrupt the floppy disk. So that was the property of a floppy disk of electromagnetic tapes. So you may think about the security purpose that was availed means so how much cautious we used to be. So that was the earlier case when we talk about the video recorders and digital audio tapes. Then they did not have the proper data rates. Means when I talk about higher rate of data transfer, they did not achieve it. They did not fulfill this. So again, the next parameter that did not fulfill is the storage requirements.
they had very less amount of storage when you talk about floppy disk it is 1.44 mb now no one looks into the matter of mbs everyone are looking into a gbs and tbs now in the storage now those were the properties of a floppy disk so again magnetic video records has very less amount of storage and moreover it had very poor quality means the quality of information that was achieved after storing was very less next they what they thought they thought of coming overcoming all these concept with the concept called optical storage so optical storage was very high storage capacity because they achieved it storing the huge amount of data and also with very lower cost that is the advantage of optical storage high data storage with less cost so usually we might have seen that cost is directly proportional to the storage but here with respect to this we were able to manage the data with higher data with feasible amount of cost that was the one practicality with respect to optical storage then we started our thinking of coming out with a new thing that is called audio compact disc we call it as cd what is that cd cd was mainly used to store the audio information so we call it as audio compact disc this came into existence where people started using it where which was it was used to play long plays whereas when you talk about long plays in the textbook it is been represented as lp lp stands for long play in even the videos earlier days video was stored in the long plays when it called for long long plays you might have seen the gramophone plate kind of things where it would be a, as big as a plate a dining plate size there would be a small spindle hole which was kept on the surface and a needle was placed on it when it rotates the needle rotates on it so that information was done so our sense that is called the long <coughs> sorry long plays so audio was used with the long plays along with the long plays those videos were also used but they did not achieve the popularity and they did not fulfill the complete requirement that the end user wanted next <coughs> <coughs> sorry next while continuing with respect to the optical storage let us look into the history of this what happened with respect to the optical storage the video disc the earlier it was called as video long play so which is which is similar to the audio long play that is like a gramophone plays which consumes very less amount of data and storing is very difficult because the device itself was very fragile when you say fragile very delicate if you bend it it used to break off and storing the data should be very precise means it has to be kept in a very good enclosure where no electromagnetic field was introduced or it doesn't come into contact with the external electromagnetic field because if it comes under the contact with the electromagnetic field or any kind of heat pressure or anything the data used to get erased as such as floppy disk so this was the case at that time the people again gave into the new concept that was called as the video long play so video long play were executed in those days in just after 10 years after the video long play in 1982 just after 10 years of the video long play 1982 the compact disc digital audio was introduced we call this as cd da so compact disc digital audio was introduced so what is the importance of this this word the stereo effects into it and also the audio along with the video was able to store so what is the com primary concept here we were able to store audio and also video into it this was an added advantage with respect to the video long play in just matter of 5 years after the video long play in 18 1982 
CDTA came up after the launch of CD2DA in just five years, it would be a shocking thing to know that <clears throat> 30 million, 30 million CDDA, CDDA players were sold. Now we'll think into it. This was the new technology that is coming into your, the, coming into the market during 1990-82. So in just in when it was launched in 82, in next five years the assessment was made. So 30 million CDDA players were sold, and almost 450 million cdda discs were sold to the market and people started liking in liking liking those things and it became very much popular in that area or in that uh, period of time so we should think that what how the information is gain, gaining the importance people are liking the new technology we, any time we would be shocked so will this come into the market if it coming into the market will it be getting into popularization yes people are looking into the advancement so when it comes to advancement this is the best example that can be considered next with respect to the extension of cdda so the extension was announced the extension fund was announced in 1983 stating that in the extension with they said we would extend it the architecture of the cdda so that architecture mainly was revealed in 1985 Though it was revealed at later time, this CDDA was getting into popularity. People started using the CDDA things for storing their audio and also the music. And even the people started buying the players and it went on. But in 1983, the extended architecture was announced. In 1985, it was given to public. This is the property of CDDA. When CDDA was given in 1986, CDI. When we call it as CDI, it is Compact Disc Interactive was denounced. When the Compact Disc Interactive was announced, it gave up the complete description. complete description of the CD structure. How would the CD be? What are the parameters? What are the things that are associated with this? All these data was completely revealed to the environment and environment into the into in sense to the people next what happened next i'll continue here in 1987 in 1987 digital video interactive we call it as dvi digital video interactive came into popularity so it was presented publicly what was the importance of this dvi in this dvi they introduced the concepts of encoding that is compression and decompression using lot of very efficient algorithms algorithms were made used for compression and decompression of the data next in 1998 this 1988 this is said to be the era where the much more popularity of optical storage was done what was happening here here it happened to be the cd rom we call it as with extended architecture was given what is the importance of this architecture with this architecture because it was called an extended architecture which had the all the privileges of modifying and converting this technology into the required form microsoft announced the carriers and specific specification for the multimedia and published in 1989 uh, completely by microsoft Microsoft utilized this extended architecture and published how multimedia concepts can be stored and it's all specification and how carriers will be taken with respect to data, with respect to CD and again from the CD. It was published clearly after a launch of uh, CD uh, extended architecture CDDA in CD in the CD-ROM concept in eight, 1988 and that was 
made public and that was announced publicly by the Microsoft in 1989. Next, when you look into the concept in 1990, In 1990, compact disc write once. We call it as CDWO. What do you mean by WO? The name itself suggests write once, which are much more popular and what we are using it. Where the manufacturer used to manufacture the CDs and they were selling it. What we take it, the CD was bought on the market and we can write on that CD-ROM only once. So this technology was introduced in 1990s. From 1990s, the same optical storages are still made use of it. Even it is popularized till now. People are making use of writing, uh, burning those d d uh, process of data onto the CD. The process of writing the data or whatever that it might be, audio or video, onto the optical storage is called burning. Why do we call it as burning? Because the optical storage, when you say about optical, it works on the principle of light. Where here, we use a laser lights to encode the information into the optical storage. So that process, uh, using the light we are writing the data, we call that process as burning. So this should be known. Next. What happened? And in, in association with the CDWO, they also introduced the optical storage with respect to magneto. We call it as CDMO. When you call upon CDMO, it is C compact disc magnetic opticals. So even that was introduced, both the technology gained its more importance. Later in 1995, This is the very important thing where we look into the concept called CD RW. What does R stands? Read write. Where information was already available, we could erase that information and write it again. Or if you want to delete it, again we can erase it and again we can write. It was something like a floppy or a pen drive where the data that was already stored could be erased. So this concept or this technology came into a picture 19, from in 1995. You might be knowing you when you buy a CD, you, in, on the CD cover, the label will be as such CD-R. When you say CD-ROM R, it is only readable means you can write only once. When you see CD-RW, where it can be read many times and again it can be written over and over again and again. That is the difference. Obviously, with respect to CD, that is magneto-optical and CD write ones and with respect to RW, the technology of uh, working principle holds good but the advancement is done and similarly, the cost of the device would be slightly higher. Next, when you talk about the things, in 1996, a consortium of DVD was done and they called it as DVD consortium where various firms of different companies, various firms joined together and they said, so when all the technology was done, let us also introduce, get ourselves involved into it and enhance the storage capacity. That's how the DVD came into a picture. Though this is the brief history of the optical storage. So, which is starting from a video disc, we call it as video long play. And till that, we have looked into the concept of DVD. This is how various concepts of DVD or optical storage came into a picture. So, we call this as history. Next, look into the basic things, basic technology or terminologies. And mainly when we talk about this, I forgot to tell this. The concept of optical storage was mainly developed by two persons. One was a person, another was a corporation. The N.V. Phillips, the person's name is N.V. Phillips. He mainly invented the concept of optical storage. Along with him, the Sony Corporation funded him and also supported him to carry out the work. So, whatever the credit of optical storage invention and development goes, it goes to both the, both the things. One is the Professor N. B. Phillips and second one is the Sony Corporation. Let us look into the basic technology.
When we talk about the basic technology, the optical storage, the phenomena, when we talk about the underlying principle that is the information is represented using the intensity of the light. What kind of light? Here we are using the intensity of the laser light during the reading process. So reflected light during the reading means the optical storage, optic itself is in the name it suggests light. Optics means light. So we are using the light information or the light rays to store the data or retrieve the data. What is the property of the light? It goes up when it hits the surface, it comes back with the information. That is the property. So that property has been incorporated in the optical storage. That is the idea principle. Second one, laser beaming, laser beam having the wavelength of about seven hundred and eighty nanometers. That is the wavelength of a laser. Such a high intensity wavelength has been used in this technology that can be focused to a resolution of 1 micrometer means such a huge intensity laser beam is merged or focused just on a 1 micrometer area so in order to achieve this technology. And one more thing is the polycarbonate surface is there. When you call about the polycarbonate surface it is a substrate layer. So polycarbonate is a material which is used as a substrate layer on the CD which corresponds which is made up of soft and thin layer which helps to the information to be encoded onto it. Okay, that is the importance of polycarbonate substance and during that substrate there are lots of pits and lands where the information are stored and distributed. Before going to the theoretical concept, let us look into the diagram to make the concept understand very easily. Okay, let us draw the diagram. So when we take up a CD, consider this as a CD, okay, this is a very fragile, CDs are very fragile. If we break up, okay, the CD into two pieces, the center portion is taken and this is the cross-sectional view of a CD. Let us consider this as a cross-sectional view. And the top, what is there? On the top, it would be label where we mention the, uh, we write on the, with the markers and other things, what kind of CD, what are the information, all these things. Next. So look at this, I am writing it in a double quote, that is a layer. So how to represent the layer? So it has to be thin coated. Okay. What is this? Here, when we call of this, it is a protective layer. Next, when we talk about this, this becomes a reflective layer because you might have seen in a CD it would be very glossy, shining kind of thing. These are very reflective in nature. Next, next we have a bifurcation where substrate, thin polycarbonate, which, which I already discussed. So polycarbonate is the material that has been used as a substrate layer. A very thin layer of polycarbonate is applied. Next, when you look into this, this is the outer layer, outer structure of the things. When we talk about these things, where we can see how Pits and lands are there. See, look at this. This is one edge. This is again one more clock pulse. This is one more clock pulse leading to down. Again, this is the place where clock pulse, again it has been triggered. Let us draw a vertical line. Now, we have drawn about a particular lines. Let us talk about the pits and lands. What are those pits and lands? Now, this area where 
you can see a protuberance where information is stored. We call those as lands. I could fill up those materials. So what are these? When we talk about these things, these are said to be the land. And these are protruded inside. Those are empty, empty places called the pits. The combination of pits and land demonstrate the working or the pattern of a CD. Now when we talk about these things, how does the laser intensity varies? Let us look into the intensity light. If you take up an intensity of a laser light, it goes like this because when you find a land, there is an information. Again during the pit, it comes down. Again during the land, high. During the pit, low. Again during the land, high. Again, it's low. It goes on like this. So this is how pits and lands are represented with respect to CD. What is this line? This is the intensity of laser light. We have seen the intensity. Now look at this. This is the topmost layer which is called the label and below that we have a protective layer which protects the, this layer protects the, this organized substrate layer. That's why you might have seen if a laser beam, if this layer was not there, if the laser beam was reflected the, from the below, it would have passed the object and gone outside because, because it's a property of a material, the laser can penetrate. So if you have a blocking kind of things where the reflecting material thing that reflects the information, look at this. If this protective layer was not there, we would have not read the information that is stored in the optical storage. Then we have a reflective layer along with the substrate. So polycarbonate substrate make the place where the laser beams can encode the information onto it. So pits and lads are the combination where the information can be stored. So laser beam with very high intensity is used in this working principle. Next, when the reflected beam thus has a strong intensity with the lands. Look at this, this is the lands because here it has a very strong intensity. When it comes to this area, it has very light intensity. Pits have the depth of 0.12 micrometer. Means, what is the depth of this? It can be considered as 0.12 micrometers. So, this is the depth of the pit. So, this is the pit and these are areas are called land. Again, continuing, laser hitting the pit with a high scatter, high, high intensity of beam can also be scattered here. This is a possibility there. So it has a chance of laser beam getting scattered when we hit the pit. So we'll look into the working in detail. Okay. When we talk about all these things during the working principle, how modulation is done, 8 to 14 bit modulation and completely in all the process, we'll go in detail. So next, when we talk about this, the information on the disk is placed on the track. So when we talk about the CD, if this is the CD, there would be tracks and sector. What are those track and sectors? Though the track will be like this spiral kind of thing. So these are called tracks. So and this part of representing is called a particular sector. And these are called tracks. So should make clear. So this is particular sector and these are called like, you might have seen in athletics, the sportsmen where they run in their track in the similar way. Here the data gets stored from one thing to other. It goes on, on the track in a spiral way. So this is called a track and a sector. The stored information can be just, can be thus placed on the track. That is a continuous data rate. Now look at this. This is the advantages of optical storage where it is continuously moving. So we can have a continuous data rates. Now 
when we say about it has a continuous data rate it is very much helpful to get a continuous data stream when we say continuous data stream a continuous audio can be played a continuous video can also be used because we have a very good high data rate which is with, with also a continuous data stream so streaming is done continuously so there is no breaks into intermediate breaks so that feels the songs videos can be used in a very efficient way a track is a form of spiral this is very clear so very spiral things are done and the pitch a track a pitch is a 1.6 to represent those things we'll have one more diagram let us look into this we'll take a cross section of a cd consider this is a cd the spindle hole where cd will be there and again we'll take one more layer okay just a portion of the cd is taken now a lens is placed and if we take a cross section of that lens in a wider range it looks like this so a track may be represented like this it is not that all the tracks should be equally in size no it depends upon the data okay there is no particular thing that each every track should be of same size there there are different different intervals also between the data look at this so again there might be one more layer one more track sorry look at this this is a cross section when we are taken it looks like this when we took a talk about this cross section and look at this the distance between one track and other track will be almost 1.6 micrometer so this is the importance so there is no problem of data getting merged and there is no interference of data between previous data or the next consecutive data so there is a separate channel of data which can be used that is the importance of this optical storage second each track would be of size of almost 0.6 micrometer so this track size each track would be of size of 0.6 micrometer it is not that it, it should be permanent so this track size varies depend upon in the various technologies we use looking back into the same thing each track when we talk about this tracks and sectors when we talk about the cd optical story a track is constituted of pits and lands so pit is about the 0.6 look at this how does it look here the pit so a pit is about the width of 0.6 micrometer now uh, looking into the things of tracks in a corresponding with respect to optical storage 16000 tracks per inch will be there 16000 tracks per inch we can achieve so you look at how many number of tracks we have just for the demonstration we have drawn at least four to five lines of track whereas in a cd it would be almost 16000 tracks now let us compare the tracks number of tracks with respect to floppy disk whereas a floppy consists of only 96 tracks per inch now look at the amount of data that can be stored when it compared to a floppy disk with respect to optical storage this is the very high efficient storage this is why we say the technology for optical storage is an advancement with respect to storage of data so this is the basic concepts or basic technology that needs to be understood with respect to the compact disc okay hope this has been very clear next so why i am giving you the comparison with respect to floppy disk is the floppy has a storage of only 1.44 mb okay when we have a comparison we will be able to assess the storage property the amount of storage that we obtain with respect to optical storage the next topic that we are about to dis discuss is video disks
and worm. Let us talk about the video disc. What is this video disc? Video disc were earlier already discussed were known to be called as video long play. As audio long play was there, video long play was also there. So which where an audio plate is something gramophone plate kind of thing, where the data or the songs for audio kind of things were stored for a bit of lengthier time. In a similar way, video long play was also used, but this did not become much more popular things. When we talk about the conventional method of earlier with respect to video, then came up the concept of video discs. Whereas video long play used a magneto optical thing where the information was not much more clear. So it was not into the market for a longer period of time and people did not like it and the information storing was hectic, retrieving was hectic and also quality was not at all satisfactory. Then the concept of video disc came into picture. When the video disc came into picture, it used a property of laser beams. We call this as laser vision technique. or we also call it as laser, laser vision technology. So this is the period where the concept of video came into a picture. And next, data stored in an analog coded format. We are mainly concentrating on audio now. So we are talking about audio. So when we talk about audio, mainly the coded format was analog audio coded format. And the sound and the picture quality was excellent here. here we used oh, not only the audio videos were also introduced to a major extent but people were storing the pictures and audio mainly at this period of time later even they started storing the video components into it and the quality of the information that was retrieved from these devices were very much excellent compared to the previous ex existing technology then these discs were in size of the diameter 30 centimeter to 14 inches. You might have seen, still now, when you buy particular electronic gadgets like printers and other things, they give you a small disc which is of only 30 centimeters. A small size, sometimes uh, very small in size, very, very small. And also, even they have increased the size with respect to diameter to higher position, the 14 inches and other things, big, big sizes. So, this is about the video disc. So continuing with these things, the followed by the long play, the video disc were especially called as video long play in 1973. This was called as video long play during 1973. So this concept was totally a utter flop. So we started using the next version, we call it as the worm. What is this worm means? Write once optical storage. I'll write it here. Write W stands for write once. What is R? Read only memory. This concept was called as write once optical storage. What we were able to do here, here, the optical storage that were available were we able to write once from the readable read memory. This means the memory was there on which we were given at the blank. We can able to write whatever data we are required into it at only once. One possible, only once possibility was available because it was the, that technology that was used. We were not able to erase what we was written once. This is called write once read only memory. So this was able to achieve with the utmost of 36 minutes of audio and combination of video means in this technology we were able to store 36 minutes of audio plus video into it this was a good achievement at that period of time and not only that this used about 30 frames 
per second. When you talk about the video quality, anything about 27 to 28 frames is a very good thing. We get motion picture, but this was able to achieve 30 frames per second. That was also very good things and stored and also played back where the information can be stored into it for 36 minutes and also information could be written from it which is about a 36, 36 minutes video or the combination of audio and which had a excellent quality. And second one, it was able to store 54,000 54,000 studio quality still images into this device. Boom. We call it right ones, optical storage device. Right ones, read one, read read only memory. So for first thing, you were able to store 36 minutes of combination of audio and video into that, and also we were able to store 54,000 studio quality still image into it. This was a very good achievement. And now when we also look into that in the year 1992, many write one storage devices were manufactured by various firms and it has a storage capacity of 600 MB to 750 MB. Many firms started this. Then when the, when the specification and the extended architecture was released by Microsoft and other people, they started using this concept. Many firms came into the existence saying that we'll manufacture the different quality of the things and we said they'll enhance the storage quality and many started producing those. When they started producing this right one, right one's disk, they were able to achieve the storage capacity from 600 to almost 750 MB during that time. And these disks have the diameter of 3.5 to 14 inches what is existing or prevailed till today. So when you talk about 3.5, it's a smaller disk where still we get with respect to any kind of operation of drivers or any when we buy any electronic gadgets, we get a small kind of CD. Only it's used for particular drivers operation that thing. So from 3.5 inches to 14 inches, the disks were available. And one more important thing here is when compared to the other magnetic tapes and uh, CDMO techniques is the security here. Means when you talk about a magneto optical devices where it, the data could have been lost, where the data could not be preserved for a longer period of time due to external factors like the friction, heat or any electromagnetical waves or conventional electrical variation, the data could have been damaged. Here it is not the case. So data can have been stored for the prolonged period of time. That is the advantage of the data storage with respect to things. And then in order to achieve higher storage of these things, they started using the concept called jukeboxes you know very well what are jukeboxes jukeboxes are the multiple storage of multiple disks where the storage capacity was enhanced up to 20 gb where the devices had storing capacity or allocation capacity of multiple disks where the many disks 5, 6, sometimes 10 disks were able to be placed into those joke boxes and the storage capacity was enhanced up to 20 GB. Now so in some of the joke boxes, the storage capacity has been increased up to terabytes. So this is about the video technologies with respect to video and uh, worms. When we enhance our concept, particularly with worms, there are some specifications that we need to understand. When we talk about worm, it is not the worm. You should be remembering the expansion. Right worm, right ones, read only memory. So we will pronounce it like worm, worm, worm. When we talk about worm pronunciation, it is the abbreviation of right ones, read only memory. So there are some few specifications that we need to understand. What is the first one? First one is media overflow. What is this problem or what is the 
parameter what is this video overflow whenever we need to write the data into the cd first rather than writing to data we need to analyze assess the storage capacity because these are continuous data streams if we don't assess it and keep writing if the storage is enhanced or secondary storage needs to be used one more disk so if we don't assess and write there would be no continuity streaming we will lose those continuity in order to assess this the first assess the storage assess the property how much of data can be stored on this only then you can take up a process of burning the data into city there into the cd so media overflow is the main specification concept that you need to understand assess the quantity of data assess the quantity of storage available so if there might be n number of storage available again means one more cd might be used before writing it approve it means take it as a granted things means write this information before analyzing so do a complete analysis work then go with the process of burning the data into thing this is called media overflow second is called packing what is the packing deals with it refers to the problem stemming in the field of blocks when you talk about the fixed blocks you might be knowing each block when you talk about the size it is 2048 bytes each block when you start about the uh, storing of data only one byte of starting data is used to store and the remaining data will be stored without the information mean the first byte uses only one byte so remaining 2400 and 2000 2000 uh, 2047 bytes will be stored on the disk without the information because it is the one byte use is used to store the remaining information this is one more thing that has been stemmed as a problem or a specification of a worm disk that has to be taken care third one is revision what is this revision a care has to be taken with respect to the concept of revision many at times we may move the data or a video from one place to another or it might be deleted so still the optical storage uses the reference or a transparency area as a reference so in order to move the different version we need to code that if not the optical storage get stuck into it so there would be not continuous movement sometimes you might be facing this problem the video will be playing up sometimes you get stuck there itself there will be no continuity means the continuity for the next part is not pronounced or it is not defined there so where the next sequence of data is stored that information has been not given at that insert time you keep on seeing a movie or a motion picture or audio it gets stuck there and it would not move into the next possible track so these are the three kinds of problems or you can call it a specification that needs to be understood with respect to the worm properties the first one is a media overflow second one is the packing and third one is the revision so by by this i would like to end up this session in this session we have clearly seen the background of the optical storage what made the invention of the optical storage that is a magnetic tape magnetic disk and other things we have seen and how the optical storage was started what is the background and we have also seen the history of the optical storage when the invention was started from the way back in 1970s till the 1990s with respect to the dvd technology a complete uh, history uh, history or, or a theoretical concepts so with respect to the evolution of the optical storage we have seen and then we have seen the technology basic technology how does the cd work with respect to pits uh, lands and and the laser beams and we have we have also seen the various concepts what is the size of the pits what is the size of the land how the information are stored and other thing next we have seen about the video formats that is a video disk and the worms and we have also discussed about the various properties of worms that is write worms read many so these are the contents that i i wish to discuss in this session thank you very much